In this video we're going to take a look at some formatting options for charts. Uh, we need a chart to work with so we're going to recreate the chart that we created in the previous video. Uh, we don't want percentages, we just want wins and losses so we're going to select and we also want the word wins and the word losses in the legend. So we need to include stuff on this row, even the word teams, even though it's not going to show up any place in my chart. So select everything from A2 down to C13 and then all the chart stuff is on the insert tab and what we want is we want a 2D column, clustered column chart. Uh, there are some other options here. Um, let me pull this. Uh, actually what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to select that I think and then we'll move it off to the side a little bit and um, we'll go back up here to changing the chart type and for column chart it gives us the options here and um, if I choose this, uh, we'll see a preview. And um, it stacks the losses on top of the wins. And uh, the chart's not all the same height because apparently uh, Purdue, Illinois, whoops, I can't move the mouse too far. Uh, Purdue, Illinois, Michigan, and Indiana did not go to a bowl game that year. So uh, they have won fewer games than everybody else. Um, the next one is 100% stack column. And if we select that one and take a look, then everybody has 100%. So the numbers, and I can't move the mouse too far here because it ends up uh, switching the view, so I'll just leave the mouse in the middle. Uh, everybody uh, has 100%. And so it shows their wins and losses as a percentage of their totals. And even though Purdue and Illinois and Michigan and Indiana did not have the same number of games, their bars uh, are still going to be the same height because everybody has 100%. So um, be careful if you use that. Uh, we've got some 3D options and uh, basically the same thing. Uh, this is just with a little three-dimensional stuff added. Uh, this one uh, is the stacked and this one is the 100% stacked. Then they've got another option here where they put the um, losses behind the wins so you can see it like that. Uh, I'm not a big fan of using 3D charts uh, mostly because they have a tendency to kind of distort the data when they add that 3D effect. So uh, I'll generally stick with these two-dimensional options. And, you know, probably 99% of the time, if you want to do a column chart, this is the one you want. So we'll just leave it the way it is then. Whoops, I better go back here and click on reselect that. And click on OK. And uh, there's my chart that we're going to work with. OK, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move the chart. Uh, everything we're going to look at is going to be on the Design tab in this video and we're going to move the chart and we're going to move it to a new sheet and we don't need to worry about the name of it you can change it easily but we're only going to put one chart in here and this is just a demonstration so we're going to click on OK and this is what our chart looks like uh, when it's on a page by itself if we did a print preview here this would show up as a separate page and I kind of like doing this option for a couple of reasons. Uh, one is it, it just makes the chart nice and big and it's easy to read. And if you want to do editing, uh, it just makes it a little bit easier, I think. And uh, if you go to print it out, it will print out this on a separate sheet because this is now on a separate worksheet. So it'll print it out separately. And uh, so you'll, you'll get a bigger chart when you print it out too. So, uh, But you can leave it on the same page if you want to. So uh, let's look at some editing options here. First of all, let's click on the chart title. And if you click on it once, uh, you can just start typing your new title. So I'm going to type 2009 Big Ten Football. And enter. And when I hit enter, uh, it fills in the space for the title here. Okay, now let's look at on the Design tab. There's also a Format tab. They sound pretty much the same. Um, I think Design has more to do with the overall view of the chart. And Format is getting into some more detailed stuff. Um, let's start over here at the left. We've got the ability to add chart elements and uh, we can have the axes. I think you probably always want the axes to be uh, visible and you can just turn these on or off. And we can do axis titles and um, I want to put one. It's usually a good idea to label it. Sometimes you don't need to because it's self-explanatory but uh, it's better to add too much information than not enough. So I'm going to do primary horizontal and you see it put the axis title down there and I'm just going to type the word, I've got that selected so now I just type the word team and hit enter and it'll replace it. 
Uh, I'm going to go back to ch add chart element here and we're going to go to axis titles and we're going to do primary vertical and again it's selected so I can just start typing. I'm going to type in number of games and hit enter and that replaces the vertical title. Um, chart title can I can have none and it says the live preview here above the chart uh, do a centered overlay which actually puts it in the chart I like it better above the chart so we'll just leave it the way it is uh, data labels uh, you can actually put the numbers the numbers on the blue are kind of hard to see because black on dark blue like that doesn't show up very well you can put them on the inside end you can put them on the inside base down at the bottom uh, outside end uh, is probably where they're the most visible um, you can do this data call out uh, which really kind of clutters up your chart I normally don't think you need to put data labels in because the whole point of doing a chart in the first place is so a person doesn't have to look at a bunch of numbers they can just get an idea by looking at pictures um, there's an option for a data table uh, you can put a table down at the bottom and the only difference here is between these last two is whether it puts the little blue or orange square next to wins and losses and again uh, same as with data labels uh, the point of doing a chart is kind of get away from the numbers so I don't think you're going to use that very often either uh, error bars we're not going to worry about that grid lines uh, you see we've got primary horizontal grid lines there and you can add primary vertical ones uh, most of the time you probably don't need that uh, you can do minor horizontal uh, I'm gonna go ahead and select that this may be kind of hard to see on a video because they're pretty faint but there are now four lines one two three yeah four lines between the 12 and the 10 here they're a lighter gray and obviously a smaller interval uh, let's go back to chart element here and let's go to grid lines and I'm gonna turn off minor horizontal it doesn't make much sense on a chart like this uh, we're gonna go to grid lines again and uh, another option is primary minor vertical and you probably don't need that very often either uh, legend just lets you decide whether you want one or not and if you do uh, where to place it and uh, as we go through these here it'll put it in different locations I'm gonna put it over on the right there and there we go uh, there's also a trend line option here uh, that we're not going to worry about at least not in this video uh, there's a quick layout button here that uh, has some of these options already added for you and if you pause over each one of these uh, we'll see a live preview so um, you know most of them have titles um, they may or may not have the numbers over the bars um, they may or may not have a legend or the legend might be in a different location uh, here we're getting fatter bars and no title um, so um, if one of these looks the way you want your chart to look uh, you can get where you want to go more quickly just by clicking on one of these instead of going over here and adding the elements individually I'm not going to pick any of these though uh, we've got an option here to change colors if you want to and as I click on each one of these uh, I can get different colors for the bars and it looks like I'm the first two colors here are what I'm getting so if I pause over this I get orange and yellow if I pause over this I get green and blue and there we got these monochrome ones down here which I recommend staying away from because um, the problem with monochrome is all, everything is the same color and it makes it hard to distinguish the bars from one another sometimes and yeah, we've got quite a few choices here for monochrome but in general I think you should probably stay away from that uh, we'll go back to our original one here then we've got chart styles and um, chart styles will kinda does some of the things that the quick layout does uh, it you know gives you different formatting options for your chart and uh, there is more there's a more button here this little down arrow with a hash mark is the more button and it gives us some other options here and the bars look kind of blurry on that one and here they overlap and they're kind of faint and uh, be careful about picking one like this if you're ever going to print it out because you'll spend a fortune on black ink if you print one of these out if all you're going to do is put it online or email it to somebody it's not a big deal uh, so we've got all these different styles here and you can go through and you can kind of see what you like and what you don't like and if there's one in there that you like you can pick that one out and I'm gonna pick out uh, style number six here okay. and we've got an option to switch the row and the column data if we do that um, it splits everything up 
and instead of having two series where a series represents like one color so instead of having one series where over let me see was it here uh, for the wins and one series for the losses uh, it's interpreting each row as a series so this will be one color these two will be one color these two will be one color and so on and if you look back over here that's what we get Iowa is blue for wins and blue for losses uh, whoever was next is orange and orange and then gray and gray and so on but uh, this is very hard to read because now you have to go to the legend to see which color is which and um, let's we're gonna switch it back there um, if you made a mistake selecting your data, you can go back here and reselect it, although usually it's probably just as easy just to toss the whole thing and start over again. And if you want to change the chart type, uh, you can go up here and you can change the type, and I think we've already taken a look at that. Um, there's also this little plus sign over here for uh, adding chart elements, and it's pretty much the same stuff that we had up here. Uh, so you can turn something on or off. Um, let's say, uh, let's take the chart title here, and it's on, and let's click on this little arrow over here and choose above chart, and uh, let me see, if I want to, um, let's do data labels, and I've only got one choice apparently for that. Um, So these are pretty much the same. Sometimes you'll see more options down here though, and if you see more options, you can click on that, and this little um, dialog box will appear over here on the right side. And we've got, um, we've got uh, title options, and we've got text options. Um, this can be a little confusing sometimes. Uh, so when you click title options, you get this and this and this, and if you click on each one of these, these are like separate tabs, and they've all got different options below them. And then you go to text options, and you also get uh, these three different tabs for text options. And to me, it's not always intuitive exactly what this icon means versus this icon versus this icon. And sometimes you just have to go hunting here uh, until you find what it is that you're looking for. So these things apply to the text. Uh, these things apply to the title. And just go in here. If you want to change the formatting, just go in here and take a look at it and play around. Another way to get that to show up over there, I'm going to close it, and um, let's take a look at the background here of our plot area. The plot area is, most of it is like from this corner up here down to this corner down here. And so I'm going to right click on it, and uh, the it's usually the bottom option when you right click, format plot area, and that will do the same thing. It will bring up this dialog box area over here on the right. And right now we've only got two choices here for plot area options. And, you know, we can go back and change this to something else if we want to. Uh, but the only options for the plot area are the fill and the border. And if you click on the little arrows here, you'll see what your options are. And then this is effects. And most of the time, I don't think you're going to mess with the effects very often. But sometimes uh, you may want to put in a different uh, fill color or something like that. So if I, you know, if I click on something else here like the title, I get format chart title. If I click on one of the bars, I get format the data series, and this will format the blue one for me. If I don't like the orange color here, I can for click on that, and format data series is over here. And I can do a solid fill for that, and then go down here, and I can pick uh, the color that I want. And if you stay with standard colors, you'll be okay. Standard colors are always available. Um, However, this one I don't think was a standard color, so if I, let me s check on that and see, let's click on, and let's go down here and see what's selected, and um, I don't actually see, whoops, let me undo that, I did not mean to select it, okay, so if I click on the down arrow here, I must have missed, okay, if I click on the down arrow, I'm still not seeing any highlighting of the blue color that I've got, uh, but it does not look like one of these here. So it could be regular blue. Uh, let me show you what happens though. Um, if you don't choose from the um, standard colors row at the bottom, uh, if you go back here to page layout and you go to themes over here, uh, this changes the theme colors. And you know what? I must have. I must have colors here that are not theme colors. I'm going to go back here 
and I'm going to right click on the red and I'm going to go to my fill color and I'm going to choose one of the theme colors instead. Okay, so I'm going to pick this uh, light orange and, and now if I go over here and if I pause the mouse over these different themes the color should be changing. There we go. It's not doing a live preview. Um, which I thought it did. Uh, actually, hang on a second here. Let me just go back to this. And now let's try pausing the mouse. Now I have to select them. But when you do, you notice the colors change. So um, if you use theme colors, you need to be very careful that you don't change the theme at some point in the future. Because if you do, all of your colors change. And something else you might notice is the fonts change as well. So And the font colors change. This is not black anymore. And... Um, we've got a new font here so um, you probably want to make sure that you choose a theme before you start going in here and doing a whole lot of formatting on your chart so we'll take a look at the format tab in a, another video